Praise the Lord. All glory to God. Here I am on the fifth day to share my testimony for the glory of God. So uh, let's hope today we will have something more to, to give glory to God because I know this, uh, this whole testimony is inspired by God. Right? So there's nothing actually that I'm saying uh, I don't have even a prepared paper. I just say what God shows me and that's it. So remember, I was talking about four cases, four high court cases on one complaint. That is the company's interest they had. They indicted me on four complaints, on four indictments on one complaint. And I shared with you yesterday, one case ended up on 31st August 1992. And the verdict was not what we expected. Maximum imprisonment of three years, uh, the lady judge gave me. But next day, thanks to God's mercy, thanks to the effort of my lawyer, young man, I came out of prison. Then on the same day, 31st August, there was another case. They came and withdrew that case. I suppose they were happy because I got a conviction. They were quite happy. They had a party. They were joyful. All that was all right. Third case, which was the case that I said that where the lawyer, my earlier lawyer had a fight with the judge. Probably the company thought the case is going in their favor. And they kept that case going. The fourth case... Again, they withdrew it. So now, two cases withdrawn. One case already convicted. Second case very much in their favor. It was moving about. During this time, my parents, they were really broken. Because, you know, they had a lot of hope on me. They struggled. They, they had to really go through all the crises. They struggled, and but they thought, okay, things are going to happen for them. But it did not happen in the way that we thought, and it was so bad. So this is my father, whom you can see in this photograph. He's uh, Neville Fernando. Uh, he was, I think, a very broken man. And in um, 31st August 1992, the verdict, although I came out of 1st of September, there were a lot of, lot of pressure from my own family. They were saying, in fact, the pressure was very much on my wife, saying that, you know, uh, uh, that I became a Christian and that is why all these problems. I don't know what my father's thoughts are because he had a, a kind of a, a respect for Christianity because his mother's family came from a Christian background. But uh, he was very sorrowful. And when he was just 69 years, 68 years old, even, yeah, even uh, 60, yeah, just 68 years old, in 1993, October, he passed away. It was a sad moment for all of us. And particularly, you know, uh, he, I think, passed away without that much of a hope about me. So uh, that was him. And I'll just show you uh, my uh, mother also, just to just to uh, just to show you that you know the lady who really sacrificed everything to give me this life. She came from a very big rich family. My father also came from a very rich family. My mother married when she was just uh, you know when she was just uh, eighteen years. Yes, just eighteen years plus she got married. And I was born when she was just 90 years. But this lady sacrificed all her life to bring eight children. And particularly for me, she gave everything what she had. And uh, she lived for a little longer, at least. But uh, my father uh, passed away when she was just, uh, you know, uh, 68 years old. So that was somewhat a kind of a tragic situation. Uh, I put my granddaughter, that's my treasure, that's my joy, really. Uh, she's uh, here, she's uh, um, just a couple of days back. He had Roshan's birthday at uh, Hotel Mirage in 
Colombo, we had a di uh, we went for dinner, a family dinner. Here yeah, she is enjoying her cup of orange juice. Right. So uh, in December 1993 came. So that first so first case, the very first case, or the rather second case, that where the lawyer had a fight with the judge, it was proceeding, and the company kept case, that case going on continuously. We thought they will withdraw that law. So in a way, we were disappointed. Why? Again, they are keeping one more case going on. So we had to go on to trial. We, had, we went to court. We went on trial. But I told you, the judge's mind changed a lot after the, the new lawyer took over or the new lawyers took over. His attitudes completely changed and the case went on. Prosecution closed their case. This time, I said, trusting in God, I'm going to give evidence. So my lawyer said, all right, it's a risk. I said, it's all right. I'm going to give, I'm going to face a cross-examination. So I was put on the dock and the prosecution, a very strong set, lot of prosecutors, uh, they started cross-examining me. In fact, the cross-examination went for two full days. Two full days. And I believe every moment Luke 12, 11 came right. Holy Spirit gave me the words. Actually, I did not have too much of a uh, strain because uh, I just have to, had to tell the truth. But God gave me the memory because most of these transactions have happened somewhere in 87 uh, or rather 84, 85. So here I'm in 1993, eight years later, giving evidence. Not easy to remember all that, but God is good always. So God gave me the strength to do all that. And uh, so that happened. And um, so we had, uh, uh, I was able to come and give, go and give evidence. Judge was very intently listening to all the evidence. And praise God, I was able to show him lot of documents, lot of documents, vouchers, where they removed the supporting documents. The way the directors are given approval, they are removed it. But praise God, there were the staple holes on those vouchers. Staple holes on those vouchers. Judge saw all those things. And then I said, you know, these people have manipulated. They removed all these supporting documents and they are trying to put me into trouble. This judge really saw it. Unfortunately, the lady judge did not see it. She did not want to see it at all. Later on, we came to know really what happened. Because the company had a, a lady lawyer, a company had a lady lawyer inside the company, the chief legal officer. Uh, she's a, a kind of a, a, human a human rights person. She appears most of the time on TV talking about justice for children, justice for women and all that kind of thing, but she really, really harassed us. She really uh, wanted to destroy us. She was the, basically the manipulator in everything. She removed documents. She, uh, she did everything. And when we read that 31st August 1992 judgment, we find in the judgment people who did not even come to give evidence People who are not called to witness box, in the judgment, their names are also appearing. I do not know how those things happen. But uh, one thing later on I realized, that same lady judge and our lawyer, the not our lawyer, the lawyer of the company, that legal officer, they are in some organization working together. So probably they were friends, and maybe, we do not know, but God knows best. So, uh, that case, we did not have a chance. But in this particular case, when I started giving evidence, when I showed all those vouchers with the staple holes, all that empty vouchers without the documents, judge saw it. And then he said, 31st December 1993, 
he will do his verdict. Now, when I think of 31st, I get scared. Because 31st August 1992, sentence was a three-year imprisonment. And here, at the threshold of the end of a new year, end of old year, December 1992, 31st December 1992, uh, a verdict, another verdict. So, again, trusting in God, after a lot of prayers, uh, we went to courthouse. This time Father Asari did not come to go to courthouse. Uh, by this time there was some kind of a, a relationship getting strained for some misunderstanding or some reason we do not know between Father Asari who was our real great mentor. Uh, but uh, so happened I had to go to courts. My brother-in-law Nalin was there. In fact my wife came that day. I did not want her to come because I thought Okay, if I'm sentenced, it's going to be a, another crisis for her because un unlike in 1992 case, we did not have the same confidence because last time we went with the confidence and we messed it up or rather it was messed up for us. So this time uh, we, I did not want my wife to come but she came and the case was called up 31st December 1993 and the judge says I'm acquitted. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm acquitted of all the charges and uh, one day I will try to pick up that judgment and put it on the screen to show you. Uh, he says something fantastic, something really. He says the accused was subject to two days deep cross-examination and the cross-examination the accused came out without any blame and the court accepts every word I said. Praise the Lord. Here, a powerful company, powerful lawyers, cross-examining me and with two comparatively junior lawyers, I go and the judge says, I'm completely acquitted. Not only that, my evidence is totally accepted. And you remember, this is the same judge who had a fight with the, my previous lawyer and where the case was going other way. So God is good again. He can change the direction of the judge. God is in control of every situation. So that case came to an end and we were quite happy. Now no more cases. Yeah, by this time the civil case was happening around and civil case was filed by the company claiming some one point some million from me saying that I have robbed this money from the company and the case was taken up for trial and the chief the main witness was the finance director my immediate boss of the company he came to give evidence and under cross-examination he could not answer he had to admit in the courthouse what he's telling his life Everything he said, yes, I admit it's a lie. I admit it's a lie. I have those evidence. I'll try to pick it up and put it on the screen one of these days. So ultimately, they knew. And the chairman of the company also came to give evidence. He also failed. He also had to admit a lot of things. Later on, they withdrew that case too. So that case was also over. So now no more cases. 1994 began on a quite a happy note. Uh, I was doing a small job at that time as a consultant to a venture capital company. Thanks again to my good friend Nali Nathanayaka who uh, got me that job and generally the things have become a little bit peaceful but not for too long. You remember they withdrew two cases. They withdrew two cases somewhere in 1992. Now 1994, February, they refile one of those withdrawn cases. You can see how wicked these people are. They lost a case in 1993, December. 1994, again they come and refile a case which they withdrew in 1992. This is all the good work of that lady lawyer. Lord forgive her. 
So, another new case now. Another new set of problems. But thank God my former lawyers, they were still there for me. They said, don't worry, we will go in faith. And we went in faith. And those cases were started in 1995 towards in, I don't know, 1995, the cases started. And uh, again, another trial and another period of testing for us. In the meantime, my faith in God was very, very deep. I had that deep conviction that I belong to the chosen generation of royal priesthood as per 1 Peter 2 9. I knew I am built up in him, stabilized in faith, trust in God. I applied for a government job. Imagine you are not taken in the private sector. Here yeah, I apply in 1994 for a government job in a company uh, belonging to the irrigation ministry. I stated everything what I had to state in my application, applied, called for the interview. I was called for the interview, interviewed by the board of directors and they decide to take me as the finance manager and company secretary. Praise Lord. After six years, without a job, without a proper job, I would say. In 1994, now, I'm back in the government, government job. So that was, I mean, July 1994. Here, I get a good job in 1994 as a finance manager. So given a car, and now things are looking better, even though there is a trial in the high court, that was not bothering me because I knew, okay, it's all right. August 1994, general elections are held and the former government changes. A new government comes up into power with new ministers, new president, everything new. Now I was worried again because I knew my company will now start again their old tactics of sending petitions, etc., etc. They did it. But the president of the country at that time, she got lot of uh, she got lot of uh, petitions. She did not want to get influenced by those things. She has told the minister concerned, let him work. If he's doing work, let him work. It's all right. So praise God. I still continue to work in that government organization from 1994, even with the change of government. God is an unchanging God. Our Jesus is same yesterday, today and forever. He is unchanging. Governments may change, ministers may change, but Jesus is unchanging. So I continued to work and I was quite happy. Uh, all those things were going fairly well. Uh, we started enjoying our life. We had few friends at that time, uh, Priyanta, uh, that is Kukuja Sekara, Shanti, Vasana White, Shadwell White. So we used to go on trips and our children were enjoying, their children were enjoying. It was good time for us at that time. But as it always happens, uh, uh, you know, troubles grew in different ways. By this time, 1994, somewhere, for some unfortunate reason, still, honestly, I I regret. I don't know really why it happened, but it happened. Reverend Nasiri Pereira, who was our real great mentor, uh, he fell off with us. He fell off with the Devso Seva. He went back to the Methodist Church. Probably God had better plans for him. He is going to be the president-elect of the Methodist Church, but he fell off with us. And even to date, the relationships are strained for the last 20 years. We have tried to reconcile, uh, but uh, things have not worked that well. But uh, a fairly a, a glimpse of a hope I had uh, when later on I will share about that one. 2007, again, I was put into jail. At that time, Reverend Nasiri Pereira came to see me in jail. So that's a, that's a, a kind of a hope we have that 
reconciliation will follow very soon. But uh, for the moment, yes, that was a, a, a bit of a black situation in my life. The man who really got me up for some reason or the other, uh, I cannot go into all the details, the relationships fell off. And after that, we did not have access to his great counseling. We did not have access to his home. We were totally, you know, re ejected from that place. So that trial, the, the new case that was filed, the trial began somewhere in 1995. And uh, by that time, we didn't have the support of the Reverend Asiri Pereira, but we had uh, Reverend Theodore Pereira again taking the leadership mantle at uh, Jose Seva. Like this, this time he was retired, but again he came back and took over the uh, leadership of Devso Sevava. So he was there for us. He mentored us. He prayed with us and still we were okay. And that case started proceeding in 1995. By this time, I was doing very well. I was known to a lot of government ministers, all that. And in 1996, I applied for a big post, the Deputy General Manager of Finance in one of the government large public sector organizations. Again, my trust was in God. I thought, okay, if God wants, I will go. Imagine, I have a call for the board interview, selected. With all the problems, the background problems I had, they have decided to take me. So in July 1996, I shifted from the earlier government company into a big public sector place as the Deputy General Manager Finance, the Head of Finance of a big public sector organization. It's one of the probably the third or fourth largest organization in Sri Lanka in the public sector. 8,000 people at that time. So. Uh, uh, in fact, the the, uh, the other com the other company belongs to the irrigation ministry. They did not want me to go, but uh, with the with the greatest reluctance, they released me, and I went. By this time, I'm a member of the Chartered Institute, Institute of Chartered Accountants, Sri Lanka. I'm a member of the fellow member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants, FCA, and a fellow member of the Chartered Institute of Cost and Management of UK, FCMA. So I had both these qualifications. So when I got into that big position in 1996, my old directors, the directors of the former company, they got activated again. Oh, they thought this man again rising up should not allow. So they wrote to the Chartered Institute using their influence. Chartered Institute decides in 1996, July, August, to remove me from the membership. Now, the conviction happened in 1992, 31st August 1992. My suspension from the company happened in 1988. 1993, they renewed the membership. 1994, they renewed the membership. 1995, they renewed the membership. But 1996, when I applied for the renewal, after getting this job, big job, they say, very sorry, we can't. And the president of that time, the institute, was one of my very close friends. So I spoke to him and asked him why. He say, he smiles, he laughs, and he says, I will ask my secretary to send a letter. And the secretary sends a letter saying, uh, on moral stupidity grounds, they have decided to expel me from the membership. This is how the local Institute of Chartered Accountants responded to me. If I can imagine if they had done it in 1992 when the conviction came, but they waited. Now this conviction still it is in appeal. The appeal was not heard by that time. It is in appeal. And 1996 they take action. So you can see again the stand. 
but I must give credit to Chartered Institute of Management Accountants of UK. They have also sent letters, but they did not do that kind of a nasty thing. In fact, you will realize in 1996, they did not do anything. In 2009, when my daughter was sick, the SIMA Benevolent Fund, Benevolent Fund from UK, they came to help me with a lot of money to pay my daughter's medical bills. That's how the, the UK Institute responded to my crisis. That's how our own local Sri Lankan Institute, where I have won a prize, where I have served in many of their committees, student society, then in the conference committees, I have presented papers, and all my friends in the, in the council. And that's how they responded. So, my dear friends, these things do happen. And I was disappointed. But anyway, so many disappointments in life. Still, you trust in God. You know I, that my ownership is rest with God. So I just went on. And comes 1996 towards sin. I have another unfortunate situation, incident. My mother passes away. My mother who loved me so much in 1996, December, 1st of December, she passes away. She was only 60 years old by the time she passed away. So this was a very tragic moment. And case was pending. And that case, the verdict was to be given on 10th of December 1996. My mother passed away 1st of December 1996. This time I'm working in that large public sector organization. She passes away and 10th of December 1996, a verdict. And what do you think the verdict is? Praise God. I was acquitted of all charges once again. And there again, the judge says, deep cross-examination. And I came perfectly all right with the cross-examination. Hallelujah. So, another victory for us. But in both these cases, what I see, my father died in October 1993, just three months before a victory came. 31st December 1993. My mother died 1st December 1996, 10 days before victory came in form of a, a, a quickie. My dear friends, God knows what is best. God kept those two cases going to show the world we lost one case. We lost one case that we know why we lost it. But God, like for uh, like for Moses, he kept Pharaoh very hard. He kept these two cases going. The company had a hard heart, kept two cases going, and both the cases. So now it's two against one. One, vic one loss, two victories. My dear brothers and sisters, we have victory in the name of Jesus. We have victory in the name of Jesus. The battle is of the Lord, as Reverend Theodore Pereira always says. Praise God. You will hear another part of this testimony tomorrow. Thank you and God bless.